Being well versed in blues is an important foundation for any jazz musician. Many standards themselves are just simply blues, and even if they're not a blues, they will borrow many elements or be built upon the foundations and typical movements of a blues. Its influence permeates right through the genres and subgenres of jazz. So for me, it's important to learn to play basic jazz blues songs, and, and one we're gonna look at today is one by Duke Ellington's son, Mercer Ellington, and it's called Things Ain't What They Used To Be. One could say a song for these times at the minute. Now, if you've listened to several versions of this tune, you'll hear that there's lots of variations in the way people like to play the chords. So I'll go through each line with possible variations and typical things people like to do, so you can sort of pick your own way of doing it if you like. Now, the charts you'll see on the screen are available for free download from my website under the standards section at jazzguitarwithandy.com. Now, it's more typical when you learn a jazz blues song to find that it's it's not really got a standard key as such. It can be played in, in many different keys. Uh, we're going to look at it in the key of F, but you will also find it in the key of D flat and B flat quite often as well. So version one is a very plain way of playing it, very vanilla, but uh, people do play it this way. We're in the key of F and the chords you're going to need, chord one, F7, chord four, B flat seven, chord two, G minor seven, chord five, C seven. Very simple, it's going to be like this, one, two, three, four, F7, four bars, B flat seven, two bars, F7, two bars. G minor 7, C7, F7, C7, finish on F. Obviously other places you can play those chords but just that would be a simple way to play it. What I thought would be useful to go through is variations because you listen to three different versions of it you'll hear three different ways to play the chords. Now in the first line of the blues one way you can make it a bit more interesting is hold off on a dominant seventh until bar four. So I'm going to use this chord, F69, which is a very sweet sounding chord, and then not change to a dominant seventh till bar four. So it'd be bars one to four become this. One, two, three, four. Three bars of this. Then for movement, F7, then to the B flat seven. What that gives us is it in that bar four, it just goes, oh, okay, the tension increases, we go to the four chord B flat. So it just creates a nice movement. Variation two would be to not have four bars of F, but to go to the B flat in bar two, which you often get in a blues, so like the one, four, one progression. So like this, one, two, three, four. So F7, B flat seven, back to F7 for two bars. So you'll hear that in some versions. And a variation upon that is to put in a couple passing chords. Now, before we change to the B flat seven, let's stick in a B7 on beat four of bar one. So putting that B7 in before the B flat 7 would be 1, 2, 3 here, then the B flat, and then we're going to put in a B diminished, going back to the F7. So we've got a bit more movement going on there, so like this, a 1, 2, 3, 4. Creates a little bit more interest. Another variation I like is to play F69 or a 6 9 chord there for three bars, and then in the final bar of the first line is play a 2 5, go to the B flat. So play C minor 7, F7. So, a new chord you need here is just C minor 7, same shape as the G minor 7 did earlier. So, this would be a 1, 2, 3, 4, F6 9. Then I'm going to put it here C minor 7, F7, B flat. So it just again creates more movement to that chord in the second line. Another way we can vary it is just to use different chord voicings and, and one I like for this would be the rootless ninth chord which is this. Also known as the minor seven flat five or half diminished chord. So up here this is an F9 slash A. A, E flat, G, C. Third, seven, nine, five. And then we've got B flat nine slash D here. And we could go one, two, three, four, so F9 slash A, B flat nine slash D, F9. Sounds great, I really love that voicing. Really great for sliding into a one, two, three, da, da. So I went there, F9, three, beat four, uh, B9 into B flat nine. Combine all of 
all of those different ideas. Those just for the first four bars, you could mix and match them as you like. But we went from just going four bars of F7 to a couple variations just for that first line. Now let's look at the second line. So the second line or bars five to eight on the basic chart is B flat seven for two bars to F7. Let's see some variations we could stick there. A very, a very typical one to create a little bit more movement would be to go B flat seven, then B diminish, which we had in line one, to F7. So that would be a speed, a one, two, three, four. Again, creates a nice little movement. This next one I really like. So it builds upon that first one, but instead of two bars of F7 at the end, we're gonna to go to D7 here. So we're gonna go B flat seven, B diminished, F7, D7. Why D7? Because it's the five of G minor. So that would go B flat, B diminished, F, D7 into the G. Add another chord into that one. We could, when we go to the D7, we could play the two of it. If it's a five chord and it's the five of G minor, we could play A minor seven to D7. So we could go B flat seven, B diminished, bar of F, then A minor seven, D7, which would take us to that. That some people could, could also make that half, you know, A minor seven flat five instead of A minor seven, like uh, B flat seven, B diminished. Then here you go. You know, you could use either, either would work. Another little movement I might use sometimes on that line would be B flat, seven, B diminished. Then descending F, E seven, E flat seven, D seven. So it's just using the same shape going F seven, E seven, E flat seven, G, D seven, into the G minus seven. So some nice options there for the second line bars five to eight. What about variations for the final line, so bars 9 to 12? Now on the, the first chart, the basic way, we went G minor 7, C7, F7, back to C7. Fine, but there's a lot more we can do there. Let's try this. The most common thing really is to put a bit more of a turn around on the last two bars. So we could go G minor 7, C7, then what about this? F7, D7, G minor 7, C7. For that very common way to end a blues progression before you go back to the start again. And um, what we're doing is just F7, the D7 is the 5 of 2, the G minus 7, the C7 sends us back to start on an F. Now one of the confusing things I often used to really bug me is sometimes you'll see people use G7 not G minus 7 and it kind of feels like it's interchangeable so sometimes someone might play that G minus 7, C7 and then go F7, D7, G7, C7, rather than G minor 7. Um, here it is with a minor chord. Here, now. Here it is with a dominant chord. I think with the dominant 7th it just sounds a little bit brighter and a little bit more tense maybe. And, and speaking of tension, let's make it a little bit more intense. Let's keep this the same, G minor 7, C7, and F7. Instead of going to D7, let's go to the tritone of D7, which is A flat 7, like that, and then G minor 7. And then instead of going to C7, let's go to the tritone of it, which is G flat 7. So that gives us G minor 7, F7, A flat 7, G minor 7, G flat 7, which is the semitone above the chord we start on, F. So there's a nice da da, and you get the da 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 going down there. A flat, G, G flat, F7. So that's. Again, you could play the G minor there on the turnaround as a, as a G7 optional. Um, my final line just has some chromatic sort of lead into the chord. So we go G minor 7, C7, and then go F, E flat, D flat, A flat minor, G minor, D flat 7, C7, G flat 7, F. So there's a lot of tritones, but at speed that would be... Again, a lot of movement. But what that does in that final two lines, all that movement then you know, enables the soloist to go a little bit 
frantic if you like, and then when it goes back to just F7 after that, it's a chance to then reset, you know, start a new phrase. So let's hear what it would sound like then going into the next chorus. So one, two, three, four. I think that really works. Um, it might be a bit busy sometimes and you've got to maybe agree things with the bass player, otherwise it might get a little bit interesting, but uh, sort of things you can do, chromatic approaches, so F7, to, instead of going to straight to D7, I went E flat, D7, so da da chromatically approach it. Instead of going straight to G minor, I went A flat minor, G minor. Instead of going straight to C7, I went D flat 7, C7, and then tritone, G flat 7, F7. So there's some typical variations that you might encounter when listening to this tune or looking at charts of it. Now, this is just a major blues. You also want to be well versed in how to play for a minor blues and play the chords to it. So if that's something you've not done yet, then be sure to check out my video on Mr. PC, a minor blues in C minor. If you want to learn more about Things Ain't What They Used To Be, then my next upload will be a look at Ed Bickett's solo on the Benny Carter recording of this tune. So be sure to check that out when I release it next time. If you've gained value out of today's lesson, then please hit the like button. Any questions, leave me a comment. And if you're new here, my name's Andy. Be sure to subscribe for jazz guitar lessons every Wednesday and Saturday. See you next time.